الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه فقال عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فقال عز وجل لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف أنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأخدة من لساني يفتح القوم آمين يا رب um, Just as a side note, it's not a big deal, I'm just mentioning it the Prophet did not like people sitting on walls during the khutbahs or something like that. And also when you're praying salah on chairs, do not lean on your chair because you're pretending to be in qiyam. So while in salah, on the chair, but do not take the support of the back of the chair unless you have to. This is just a side point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not put taklif or responsibility or a burden on any soul more than it can bear. We've all heard this ayah, but today I want to express this ayah from a maybe a new perspective. What is the difficulties that come at us in our life? لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا Allah will put no burden on you except what you can bear. But one of the burdens that is specifically being referred to here, what is the burden that's being referred to in this ayah, in the context of the entire surah? The burden is to carry the burden of Islam. The burden is to carry the responsibility, the taklif of the sharia, that you're mukallif because of sharia. Meaning that the rules and the regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned us in Islamic law, in Sharia, like fasting and praying and all of the things that Allah has put a burden upon us, they are not something beyond our capacity. Whatever comes at us in terms of our life difficulties or comes at us in terms of our responsibilities, whether uh, it is hukukullah or hukukul ibad, whatever responsibilities come on us, they're not beyond our capacities. They are within the human capacity. Now, why am I talking about this? You'll see. I want to talk about there is our ability to do things, our behavior. We do things. We, but then there are things that even though we know we, need, we should do it, but we don't do it. And then there are times where we're able to do something, but then other times we're not able to do something. I'll give you an example. And this is why I'm talking about this. Like in Ramadan, we're able to do a lot in Ramadan. But immediately after Ramadan, we're maybe not able to do so much. Let's discuss some of the reasons why. What is the human mechanism? So I'm going to be talking about four different things. And two of these are very important in regards to children. So just bear with me because what I have to explain today is a little bit complicated, but it will be really worth it to listen to what I have to say and try to absorb what I'm going to say. On the very top is your behavior, what you are doing. And what happens is if a person's heart is clean, if a person's attitude is good and his heart is clean, then whatever he knows he has to do there is no barrier between him knowing what he has to do and what he has to do and what he does. There is no gap between the purpose of knowledge becomes to do. When your heart is clean, there's no 
what we call cognitive dissonance. For example, I know I should not smoke, but I smoke. So this creates a cognitive dissonance. This creates a conflict within me. I'm, I know one thing, but I'm doing another thing. This is a conflict within me. So I want to discuss what are the three things that cause conflicts, internal conflicts within us. And then to understand this from the perspective of this verse that I just read, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا مُسْعَاقًا Now I said in the top level, what you can see is the human behavior. What is under the behavior is what we call our belief system or our worldview. What I believe in. What is conscious there, I believe in Allah, I believe in the Day of Judgment, I believe in Khair, I believe in Shar, I believe in good, I believe in bad. I believe in these things. This is my worldview. My worldview is I'm here for a certain amount of time and then I'm going to the hereafter. This is my belief system. This is my worldview. So outside is my behavior. Right? I'm doing what I'm what I whatever I'm doing. But what affects my behavior at the upper level is what we call our belief system. Under our belief system and under our worldview that thing that affects us the most in terms of our behavior is something that we call attitude. It's our attitude. And uh, the thing that an attitude could be good, could be bad. Now, in terms of children, I wanted to mention the thing that you have to watch out that is spreading like wildfire in the Muslim world, in the non-Muslim world, in the entire world, is the attitude of, I don't care. Maybe you have all heard your kids or yourself saying to yourself or <coughs> saying to others, I don't care. What is the synthesis of this word? I don't care. Why do people say it? What does it mean? And what does it mean when kids say it? And why should we, we be aware of this? I'm going to talk about this later. I'm just giving you the levels. What is your behavior? What you're doing? Under your behavior is your belief system. Under your belief system is your attitude. Under your attitude is something we, that different psychologists have given it a different name. Some call it the wall. Some call it the defense mechanism. Some people call it, you know, your your the the barrier to your subconscious. There are different names for it. But what does this barrier do? This thing under your attitude. It tells you, I can't and no. It tells you, no and I can't. So the worst attitude you can have is to say, I don't care. There, you can have a positive attitude, yes I can, yes I will, yes I do care. I do care about what other people feel. Or I do care about my responsibilities. You can have that attitude. But you can also have a negative attitude. This no and I can't is very important also when we're looking at little kids and how they respond. Let me give you an example. I said in the top is your behavior, right? Under your behavior is your worldview. Your worldview says, I need to pray five times a day. You believe that. I need to pray five times a day. You believe that. Under that is your attitude. Let's forget about attitude for a second. But under that is this thing, I'm going to call it the wall. And the wall always says to you, no. You tell yourself, I have to pray. Something says, no. Right? There, there's this thing, you know you need to pray, but something is telling you, you're pro, uh, some people call this what I call the wall or the defense mechanism. Another name for it that I like a lot is it's what you're at the very underneath at your subconscious level, what you're programmed to think. Your default answer to things. When they haven't gone deep into you. So for example, you know you have to pray, but there's something inside you that says you don't have enough time. Something inside you that says, I don't have enough time. So there's a conflict. There's a, there is your conscious self, your part of yourself that you're aware of in saying pray. And another part that's deep down that's saying, but wait, I don't have time. I don't have time to pray. I'm going to run out of time. There's a part of you that says, based upon your belief system, I need to give zakat, for example. Another part of you inside that'll say no. It'll have some reason. It's a defense mechanism. It's a it's a it's a it's programmed into you. Now, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because I want 
me and you and all of us to look into ourselves and realize these inner internal <coughs> self conversations that we have that when we say to ourselves I need to pray something tells us no don't pray we need to be aware that that exists because when you are aware that that exists then you can start moving forward and start doing what you're required to do so basically like I said on the top layer is your behavior on the top layer is your behavior under the behavior is your belief system what you know you should do okay and then under that is your attitude and under your attitude is your wall that always says no and I can't I'm sure a lot of you have heard your kids sometimes say I can't I can't or no I can't I can't do that dad or I can't do that it's because you're pro they're programmed to think that way they're programmed to think that way and it is your job as a parent to get rid of or to soften the blow of that thing that inside them that says no and to be able to listen to what we know in our belief system to be right now let me also mention that uh, let me also connect this with something else because you'll see the connection of where I'm going by the way why do people and why do kids say I don't care let me just uh, elucidate on this a little bit kids say or people say not just kids but people say I don't care because they don't know how to deal or cope with the world around them listen to what I'm saying when you emotionally do not know how to deal with the world around you then the response that you give is I don't care if somebody hurt your feelings if somebody hurt your feelings or someone told you to do something do pick this up or vacuum the house somebody tells you to do something somebody hurts your feelings and there is an emotional response and you don't know how to deal with that emotional response then you say I don't care and it's very important that we teach our children how they can deal with themselves emotionally okay let me now back up for a second I started with the verse of the Quran Allah does not put a burden on his soul more than it can bear so whatever Allah is asking us according to the Quran the Quran is making it very clear whatever the Sharia is telling you to do is not beyond human capacity why am I telling you this because that part of us that tells us no we need to train it to say yes I'll give you a very good example of how even under our attitude there is this wall I'll give you a very good example we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is when it when it is Ramadan I can and when it is not Ramadan I can't when it is Ramadan I can do a lot of things that I would not otherwise be able to do when it is not Ramadan I can't do it we believe that can't we believe in that excuse that our inner subconscious gives to us and says oh you can't do this outside Ramadan you can only do this in Ramadan so we we fall a prey to that inner part of ourselves that's always you know how many it's very interesting there have been studies after studies after studies that show how many negative thoughts human beings have you know why people fall into depression why people you know there's an epidemic of depression in this country especially in this country like depression pills or I, I don't know what the rates are I don't have it within me but it's it's like in the millions in terms of prescriptions people taking depression pills chronic depression all sorts of depression because why they don't know how to deal with their emotions and there's all this negativity inside us and this is what shaitan does by the way this is the role of I'm not going to go into details of this but Sultan and one of the surah of the Quran makes this very clear what does your Qareen do? you know what your Qareen is? your Qareen is your shaitan your other your doppelganger we call it he's your other self he likes the bad part of you doesn't like the good part of you he likes the bad part of you not the good part of you this is the Islamic partly Islamic explanation that part of you this shaitan that likes is that part of you that's always feeding you the fears in the shaitan 
Shaitan promises you of poverty. He is always putting you in a state of fear or saying I can't or telling you no. That's just in, built within us, human beings. And this is something we know that exists. We know all human, I mean all psychologists, I, 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 all the psychologists know that this thing within us exists that tells us no or I can't or I'll be, I'll be, uh, there's a fear of something in the future or sadness. You're stuck in the past. Somebody did something to you. This is why so many, many people are stuck in the past. My parents did this to me. And they're just stuck in that part of their life and they can't get out. They victimized themselves because of their past. Or I used to have this many, this big business and now I lost it all and now you're stuck in what you used to have and you live in that, you are always reminiscing over your past and you can't move into the future, into a new future. You know, so anyway, I was saying that human behavior has four parts. Behavior is affected by three of these. One is your behavior on the outside. Under your behavior is your belief system. What you know you should do. You know you should pray five times a day. You know you should give zakat. You know you should be nice. But under that is your attitude. Sometimes your belief system tells you be nice, but your attitude doesn't want it that way. You then become rude. Sometimes your belief system tells you be nice, but your attitude may be okay, but still the wall inside you that has fear, that has regrets, that falls for depression, that part of you would tell you, no, 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 react in a different way. So now why am I saying this? Many people must be like, why are you talking about this? So let me go to the next part. We all know about saying inshallah. We all know the meaning of inshallah. Nowadays, the word inshallah has almost become a mockery in a sense that a lot of times we say inshallah but what we mean by saying inshallah is not if God wills in the sense that it should be. Let me explain. The word inshallah is used in Quran three times. The idea of inshallah is mentioned. The word inshallah is mentioned twice but the idea of inshallah is mentioned in Quran three times. To summarize, when we say insha'Allah, this is a way to fight against that part of yourself that says, no, I can't. You're saying, yes, insha'Allah, I can. In opposition to that part of you that says, no, you can't. You're not saying insha'Allah, if it, you know, yeah, I'll do that for you tomorrow, insha'Allah. As in, oh, well, if God wants it, he'll do it as a miracle for me, but I'm not really going to make any effort in that direction. That's not what insha'Allah means. Inshallah, the idea of inshallah is that all the doors of Allah are open for me because it's very important in terms of the attitude and the belief system Islam wants us to have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, lakum ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. He has subjected for you whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Allah has created for you whatever is in the earth is for you. So Allah has put everything under the dominions or under the subjugation of man. Why were the angels asked to bow down to man? Because man has the power and the ability to do things. So when you say inshallah, it means that yes, inshallah, I will definitely do it. And anything that's in those barriers that are stopping me from doing it inside myself, I will overcome them. And if there are any external barriers, that are stopping me from do this, doing this, inshallah, I will also overcome them. Inshallah means that I will definitely do this. And if any barrier comes in my way, that will also be removed. Inshallah doesn't mean that you just say it as just a, a thing of giving people confidence that, ha, man, inshallah, kan kabula, and then that's it. Allah, Allah, inshallah, means that you're definitely going to do it. There's no question about it. And, be, and whatever you can't do, you're asking Allah's help to remove those barriers. Because generally the rule is the doors of Allah are open. It's not like all the doors are closed and then you're saying, Inshallah, I hope one of those doors open so I can do this. It's not like this. All the doors are open, you're just hoping that the doors stay open. The doors are not closed. Allah's doors are never closed. They're always open. So anyway, uh, I will continue in my second khutbah about the second part that I wanted to discuss. Now, how does this, inshallah, relate to what I was talking about earlier? 
I will also discuss that. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin awal muslimin. إن الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه نستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصه ما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقت لنا به واعف أنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانسنا على القوم الكافرين Inshallah, if everyone can start moving forward right now, because I see the, there are still more cars that are coming in, Inshallah, if you Because I'm sure the gap will be all full, probably, by the time we're finished. So, when you have a clean heart, and there is no internal inconsistencies within you. Listen to what I just said. When you have a clean heart and there is no inconsistencies within you, when your belief system, your aqidah, your iman, what you believe in, is consistent with your attitude and that is also consistent with your defense mechanisms or, your, or it is overpowering it. When that happens, when there, is a in, when there is a consistency within you, then the result is you're able to act upon your knowledge. I'll give you like even a common example. People say, people know that they should exercise. But they still tell themselves, or give the excuse, oh, it'll be no use if I do it. Doctor says to you, you need to exercise. Or doctor says you need to eat the right food. Or you need to get on the right diet. He knows he should. But he can't because his attitude is inconsistent with what he knows. Or his, he knows he has to eat the right food. Maybe his attitude is good, but his defense mechanisms, his programming is telling him something otherwise. It's not going to make a difference anyway whether you eat healthy food or not. Sometimes in the Muslim world we say, oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, but yes, of course, that is true. When you're going to die, you're going to die. But that doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourself. Uh, there's many traditions of the Prophet to this regard, but I won't go into that. Uh, there are even negative words the Prophet has used for people that are overly obese. And that's not if you're genetically obese, obviously. If it's a genetic issue, then that's different. But if you're not, if it's not for genetic reasons and you're overeating, by the way, overeating and less eating is an emotional thing. When you're sad, when you, eating is an emotional response because especially when you over, when you, people that overeat, it's because they're trying to compensate for emotional, uh, lack of emotional something. When people overeat, it's because they're trying to fill a vacuum somehow in their life. Usually what happens is when you're either overly sad, you are gonna either overeat or you're not gonna eat at all. You may know to yourself that when you're sad or upset, do you eat more or do you eat less? Some people, when they're sad, they're going to overeat. Some people, when they're sad, they're not going to eat at all. In the same way, generally, people don't realize this, but when you're eating and you're not hungry, when you're eating and you're not hungry, you're emotionally trying to compensate for something in your life. When you're eating and you're not hungry, you're emotionally trying to compensate for something that you think is missing in your life. So instead of eating, you need to be maybe reading Quran or doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah bi dhikr Allah la tatma'in al-qulub 
It is with the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, that the hearts find tranquility. Anyway, I was saying that human behavior, we behave based upon what we believe. But what we believe is sometimes overpowered by our attitude. Our attitude is so negative that even if I know I have to do something, I'm not able to do that something because my attitude is so negative. I know I need to pray five times a day. I know that when I tell myself it's time to pray, the first thing that happens is my own self, myself tells me no. Or myself tells me I don't have enough time. Or even if I'm going, there's something negative there in every human being because shaitan's there. Every human being has something negative telling you you can't. You can't do this, you can't do this. Shaitan is always putting some tort, the Quran clearly states, Quran puts sadness in, in a person, fear in a person, the idea of I can't in a person. Yes, your nafsul amara also says, no, you can't, don't. And the at worst attitude is, especially in kids, like I was saying, is when they get the attitude of I don't care. Because you know what that means? That means that they don't know how to emotionally deal with the world around them. It is incomplete, it's the complete antithesis to the statement in the Quran, La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wa Allah will not burden a soul more than it can bear. When kids start saying, I don't care, it means they're saying, I don't know how to deal with the world around me. It means that they're saying, I'm hurt. Or it means that they're saying that I don't find any purpose in life. I don't see anything worthwhile. I don't care. I don't care. This is the biggest thing on the, the mouths. And you know, by the way, I'll share with you something very interesting. Nowadays, now the older generation, you must have known, and the kids, they know this too, that there was a time where people liked syndicated programs. You know, like for example, Bart Simpson and I Love Raymond and uh, the Bill Cosby Show. We used to watch programs, right? And there used to be series of programs. Do you know what's now the big thing? It's to watch reality shows, right? To watch reality shows, this is the big thing. And you know, the thing about reality shows is all the people, I mean, maybe there are some exceptions, but you take Duck Dynasty all the way down to whatever there is down there, reality shows get higher ratings when the people of those shows have a nasty attitude, right? Because they're using foul language, they're dramatic, they're emotional, and these are the people, studies have shown, that these are the people in reality shows, they're the people that have the I don't care attitude. I don't care what you think of me, I'm gonna do what I want. And these are reality shows, and reality shows don't have smart people in it. Reality shows don't have smart people in it. To make a, a successful reality show, you need to find the dumbest people you can find and you'll have a successful reality show. You'll need to find the people with the biggest attitude the biggest egos and the most fragile egos emotionally to make you know because that's what they do they put people together and then they end up fighting each other right that's that's a lot of the reality shows put a bunch of people together that have all big attitudes and then they're fighting each other and they're all people with I don't care attitude they're all people who don't know how to deal with their reality even though you're calling it a reality show they have no idea of what reality is because they can't deal with reality. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسَعَهَا I know it's time and I promised myself that I will try my best to finish on time. Uh, please move forward. So I was saying, let me just wrap up quickly what I've said today and inshallah we'll continue from here next time. Number one, move forward, move forward. Our behavior, 
will do what it's supposed to do based upon the knowledge it has. If there is no inconsistency between your belief system, your attitude, and your pro internal programming of I can't or I won't or I'll be in regret or I'll be in fear. These four things. I can't, I, I can't, no, fear, and regret. If you do this, you'll regret it. This is at the very base of the reptilian brain, you can say. On top of that is your attitude. There's a little bit more consciousness in that. On top of that is your conscious brain, which is you're aware of what you believe. If there is inconsistency in you, then you will not be able to act upon knowledge. So now each one of us has to ask, am I able to act upon the knowledge I have? If I'm not able to act upon the knowledge I have, then I have to ask myself that, okay, is my belief system something wrong with what I believe in? That's a possibility. Okay, if my belief system has no problems in it, maybe you, what you're thinking is Islam is not really Islam. This is also a problem because each person has their own Islam in their mind. Each person has their own concept of what is Islam. So maybe for some people their belief system is messed up. But if it's not your belief system and you have the correct understanding of what Islam wants and demands from you, then you have to ask yourself, okay, is it maybe my attitude that's having problems? Am I being too negative in my attitude? Is my attitude having a problem? Okay, if it's not my attitude, my attitude is good. My belief system is good. Then maybe is it the, the wall that I have inside me, the defense mechanism that's always saying you can't, you can't. When the doctor tells you eat, eat healthy, the part of you that says no, I don't want to, or no, I can't. Is it that's, that is becoming too strong? The reptilian self is, is stronger than your conscious self? Is that what's happening? If there is an inconsistent, inconsistency between your belief system, your attitude, and the wall that you have that tells you no, or I can't, or you'll be in fear if you do this, it's a threat to you, that's what the reptile, the reptilian brain is basically, it, some, there's a danger here. So if it says no, I can't, there's fear of the future or, or sadness of the past, if that happened, if that is not in consistency with the rest, and that is overpowering your knowledge, knowledge and act, be able to act upon your knowledge. So again, I'm saying it the last time, inshallah, we'll do du'a and pray. If you're not able to act upon knowledge, it means that there is an inconsistency of some sort inside your being, inside my being, and your being, and our being. And there are always things in every human being where we know we need to do something, but we're not able to do it. That's the reality of every human being. But we need to work on ourselves to bring ourselves to the point that what I know I should do, that I'm doing it. And I need to ask myself, is my attitude about this? Like, let's take, for example, something very basic. I know I need to pray five times a day. But let me notice, okay, I know, do I really believe I need to pray five times a day? Yes. Okay, then why am I not praying five times a day? Is it my attitude? What's wrong with my attitude? You need to have that conversation with yourself that needs to be brutally honest. That why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing something I should do? If you don't have that brutal conversation with yourself, then you'll never improve. You'll never improve. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, and especially for kids. When you hear them say, I can't, daddy, I can't. Dad says, do this, or mom says, do this, and they say, I can't. You've got to investigate what is behind that. And when kids say, I don't care, you really need to investigate behind that because that's just a total emotional breakdown. That is a sign of a total emotional breakdown that your child does not know emotionally how to deal with the world. By the way, kids that are seven years and older, one of the best things you can do for them is to teach them words of feelings. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling... Because the more they know how to express what they're feeling, the more emotional words they know, the more they'll be able to deal with their world inside them. Especially for little kids, five years older and younger. You need to teach them a lot of emotional words so that they're able to talk to themselves instead of shut down 
They're able to talk to themselves. And then you need to teach them for this emotion, you need to have this emo response. Are your feelings hurt? Someone said something to you? Kids play all the time and kids are ruthless with each other sometimes. Have you ever seen kids talk to each other? Oh, you can't do this, I can do this. It's always, especially with boys, I, I can do this and you can't do this and I can do this. How do you, you have to teach your child how to respond to that when somebody says to your kids, because it's going to happen to every single child. Every single child is going to be told by his peer, by his friend, that you can do this and I, I, I can do this and you can't do this. How does, how does your child respond to that? You need to teach your child how to react emotionally to emotionally charging situations. Anyway, let's finish with dua. And a good example of this, you know, uh, just uh, Eid is, inshallah, just one, one point, and then please come forward, please come forward. Please come forward. Inshallah, we'll finish with dua right now. Please come forward, please come forward. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا نفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to see ourselves inside ourselves to improve ourselves اللهم انصرنا على أنفسنا Oh Allah help us defeat our own inner selves the negative selves اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا Amin Ya Rabb, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna tahmidu al-majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa barikta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna tahmidu al-majid Amin Ya Rabb, please those of you that are in the back on this side, there's still two people behind you, please move forward Also there is empty space in this area here because their brothers are really tight back there Come on. We have enough space if it's, if it's... We have space for about four or five people more easily. Yeah, inshallah. Inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi a'idukum la'allakum tadakkurun. Allah, follow them.